This is a special edition of Rook Rest in Peace Legend, remembering Farmaz Aslani. And my next guest is an Iranian-American attorney and human rights activist known for her advocacy efforts on human rights and democracy in Iran. Yasmin Pahlavi was born in Tehran. Her family left Iran during the Islamic Revolution and settled in California. She completed studies in political science as well as a law degree from George Washington University. As the wife of Reza Pahlavi, the exiled crown prince of Iran, Yasmin has been a familiar face at events and demonstrations and standing with Iranians in exile, showing solidarity with the Iranian people's desires for freedom and democracy. She has also been a very close and dear friend of Farmaz Aslani and, of course, his wife, Marajan. And right now, Crown Princess Yasmin Pahlavi joins me from Washington, D.C. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Um, I wish it was under happier circumstances, but um, I'm glad to be here. Yes, uh, same. Thank you for doing this, and I wish it were under happier circumstances too. I'm I'm so grateful that we get to do this in English. I've always wanted people to know the magic of Farmaz Aslani beyond the Iranian community, and hopefully, some people will see this beyond as well. First and foremost, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for all of our loss, but I but obviously this was uh, Farmaz was a dear friend of yours. How? How have the last couple of days been for you? Um, it's just a mix. I think uh, I think it's something in grief that we all experience where we have moments of levity and laughter, remembering things, and then on on the turn of a dime, we're crying. Um, it was very difficult uh, personally because I, obviously all this happened very quickly uh, and and he was hospitalized very close to my home. And um, I desperately wanted to uh, visit him and his wife, especially, and support them in any way. But also, the circumstances were such that he had uh, he had uh, issues that he could not be really uh, allowed to see people because of contagion and concerns for his weak immunity. So that being said, it was it's been uh, you know my hope was that he would come out of it, and it happened so fast, and I. I, I just, I think it's just, we're still getting used to the concept that he's not with us anymore. So it's very, very sad. Um, I did was able to visit with Marjan yesterday. And that selfishly, I told her, I said, I'm just coming over to make myself feel better. I hope when I'm there, I make you feel better. But really, I need to just hug you and just, and really, it, that was something that really helped me a lot to kind of now come to this point where I can actually talk a little bit about him. You're you're emotional right now, even just at the beginning here, huh? Yeah, because as everybody has said, um, Kyle Mars is he he's he's so special. He was so special. I only um I only met him uh actually exactly nine years ago in March of twenty fifteen. And I didn't really know anything about I, I I was not familiar with his career to be quite frank and I had never seen him perform. Uh, my connection to him and to his wife were uh, was instantaneous and it was just a human to human level. And um, as everybody has said, I, I I'm just repeating is that he he was just such a kind, polite intelligent um gentleman you know it's just very yeah. special let me let me take two two steps back based on what you're just saying first first of all how is marriage on she's incredibly strong i mean i i didn't know what to expect um going to see her but she's she's really very very strong she's always been very strong and you know when when you meet the couple you think if you don't know anything about them, you would think Majun is the entertainer. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> it's true. I it's know, true. You know, she's got it together and she's organizing and, you know, she's the main event. Uh, that that's why we love her. And thankfully, you know, she's maintained her uh, sense of humor through this as well. I think it's it's through humor. We all str we all sort of go through pain. And we reach out to, as I said, those moments of levity, and she's still doing that, and she's still there making everyone feel better. Um, 
but I hope that she can count me as someone that she can reach out to if she needs any more support. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. It meant a lot to her to see you yesterday. It, you're you're not wrong. Obviously, that this it it happens so fast. I mean, we saw Fermaz not that long ago. So, when did you first really understand that Fermaz was? actually really really sick that this was a dire situation well again just to um you know, we i saw farmers we were at dinner at my brother's home uh, less than a month ago and we uh, so that was really the last time i saw him but during that dinner um he seemed well enough i mean he had been struggling for uh, quite a while with his um uh, lung capacity and i think it had been affected by covid and his breathing uh issues and he was getting regular checkups for his um for his lungs uh but uh we had um you know such a lovely evening and honestly because he's always so put together and so perfect so handsome not hair out of place always so elegant it's hard to think of him as frail or sickly or anything like that so yeah. My last memories of him just a month ago were we laughed a lot. <laughs> we played games around the table. I was actually asking a friend of mine that was at the dinner. I said, we played um, uh, that game. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Two lies and the truth. And we go around the table guessing which of what you just said was a lie. It's actually two truths and a lie. Okay. That's it. So two truths and a lie. He was so good at it that we, <laughs> none of us could guess which one he was lying about. Because he's so believable. That's why, I mean, one of the things that we were saying yesterday on the show about, I mean, one of the things that he said about Leonard Cohen and why he was so honored that I was calling him the Persian Leonard Cohen all the time was that he said the reason why Leonard Cohen's songs work, and I believe this is true of Farmaz, is that you believe him. You just you you always believe it's coming from a real place. So so yes, he would be very good at that game because <laughs> yeah, he was really good at it. Um, Majan was pretty good at it too, but he was very good at it. But I want to say that we just you know the, that was my last memory with him. But um, generally speaking, uh, as you were saying, the Leonard Cohen um, comparison, uh, Faramars it to me was so much more than. Uh, you know, just a singer. Hmm. He really, um, I guess, you know, as everyone has seen and said, he he really never compromised his artistic uh, ways uh, for commercial success. He, he his was uh, pure art. His uh, poetry, his writing his own songs, speaking to us from his heart. Yeah. He was and is going to forever be so instrumental in making um, Persian poems and poets accessible to the masses. So he was always a combination for me of, of someone who was so smart and had so much depth. And so I never really could actually put him in any category with any other uh, Persian uh singer or artist he was really in a league of his own and he really i think left uh iran and iranians a, a gift uh with his words with his songs with his love of the persian language as we know and his love of iran and its culture and our history um i actually uh right before coming on i remembered that um he gave me this this um, this pen. I don't know if you can see it, mm -hmm. the Farvahar pen. And I I know he always used to wear it with along with the uh, Shir Khorshid flag pen. And I think this all together symbolized exactly who he was at all times, you know. And he he really um, he had this soul of someone that had lived many many lives and that. Um, he was also, again, here with us, leaving us with the gift to fight for the good, both in terms of our Iranian heritage, but also he just left the world a better place, I, I strongly believe. Yeah, I was saying that he's he's a, a, tr a really difficult reminder of our own impermanence because 
you, he is one of those people that I, I, first of all, he was ageless. Like you don't, it doesn't even, it's not even really relevant what his age was. Cause he was always just fair as, you know, like, uh, seemingly that this, this, as you say, handsome, you know, vital artist man, but, but also that you kind of would, I, I, I couldn't imagine the end of, Faramaz Aslani. It's, it's a very, maybe a weird thing to say, but there's people that you sort of see getting older and you go, okay, well, that, that person's going to, life is temporary. This is the, you know, but he, he, I, it, you know, even when we knew he was sick, it was just such a, a, a punch in the gut um, a couple of days ago to, to, to hear that he's gone. It was kind of like, how, how is that possible? Do you, do you, can you relate to what I'm saying? Yeah, um, well, I uh, I really believe that, um, and I don't want to get all hokey about it, but I, I, I've always felt that, you know, death is not something that is an ending. I feel like we have um, in our lives, we live, I, I feel we live many lives, and I think that in every life we have our karma to work out, and there are people that we feel connections with, and I think it goes beyond this particular life so it's very comforting for me to feel this because i don't feel that he's left us i feel that he is still his essence and his soul are still with us and like i said that just just um uh, going to remembering this pen and going and getting it and putting it in my hand instantaneously made me feel like he was with me this moment and and that's how i like to look so I, I'm, I'm sad and I'm, I miss, I'll miss his physical form, but I feel like through his songs and his words and um, his children, his lovely daughters, I think that we will um, always feel like he's with us and I believe he is, he will be, so. You were saying, maybe it was when you were getting the pin, you, you said just as we were about to start the interview, you were saying to me that you had just, you had just had a cry session. What were you crying about? I think I was crying about, um, you know, just the memories that, you know, he was, he, he, he's just, he's somebody that just makes a big impact. And so, you know, you, when you start thinking about it and then suddenly remember that, you know, you're not going to make new memories, it's, it's difficult and it's emotional. And, um, and I think in general, um, I, there are very few people that, um, you know, make me cry. <laughs> I, I'm not a crier. So for, for, he really was in my heart, is in my heart. And, and I can't say like, I haven't, I didn't know him as long as most people have known him, but I, we had so much quality time together. Um, you know, I remember that when he played his, his, one of his la later songs, you know, these, I think it's pronounced in, in, uh, in the car, as we were waiting for everybody else to come in after dinner, we were going to drive home, and he's like, "Oh, you know, you want to listen to my new song, you know?" And and he's always been so modest about his talent, and and so soft spoken, and I just I really appreciate that kind of person, you know. I'm attracted to that kind of a that kind of a personality who's not seeking a lot of attention, but who just in his in his aura and his solidness attracts you and 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 teaches you things every time you interact with him right. and um and i just really loved spending time with him what did he teach you what did you learn from farmers aslani he would teach me some uh, farsi words uh, that were necessary because he was very very uh he he loved our language and liked to keep it pure and liked to uh, use uh, actual words that were not necessarily derived from Arabic. And um, so sometimes it would help me find corrections uh, to change words around. Like like um, at dinner or something, he would actually correct you? Or? I can't really remember. It was like, I wouldn't be, no, he would never correct me unless I asked. Uh. Oh, no, that's the thing. Oh, the, the cost, he was so polite. No, yeah. he would never. He's so polite, and so he would never interject his opinion unless you asked of, of him for his opinion. You know, so actually, I think in the in the past, if we if we were speaking in the car on the way somewhere, usually Majan would be driving like a maniac. She cr drives like a crazy person. 
he literally, you know, she just drives like crazy. I don't know how we are not, we haven't gotten into a million accidents. So him and I could get a chance to chat while she was driving like that. So sometimes I would just ask him, you know, for, for advice about like some words that I was searching to find alternatives for or his opinion about this or that, but he, um, he was never one to interject for sure. He, he, he wasn't at all. Pushy. It, it's one of the amazing things. It's a, it's a testament to his character that, that he was so intensely smart like he had this pedigree right the, the journalism the the fluency in various languages all of this and yet he never he never played that card you know before we had him on the first like uh, when i did this i did a big interview with him a few years ago that was his first long form one in english and i remember i joked with him about it because people were saying beforehand can he even speak english like he <laughs> his english is literally better than you know most uh, linguists i yeah. mean he's like a you know and so uh but he never and and what was so beautiful is the way he talked about wanting his songs to be accessible so he didn't want to write in some uh let me show off with my sophisticated poetic prose but in words that people could relate to and it worked that's why those songs are classics right yeah i mean that's the thing it was there was not an elitist bone in his body uh, and he was so humble and modest and yet he was so talented and so smart and um, again, as I say, I think one of the reasons that I connected with him so deeply was because I admire people who don't need to constantly be um, telling people how smart they are, showing people how great they are, and that they are secure enough in their, um, in their skin and in their intellect to allow that to come out uh, when the time is appropriate. And so uh, in every way, uh, he did that, he was that. And, and as I said, you know, you really wouldn't even know that his profession is to perform hmm. because in fact, he was so much more than that. Um, you know, he's, as we all know, I think, as you said, um, not only could he write songs accessible to the masses, but then he could really sit down and, you know, recite poetry from his memory yeah. or speak on politics or speak on history. Um, it's, but he, he was always, he's never one to volunteer. I said, I've heard recently that he was shy. I didn't think he was shy. I just thought that's his personality. He has, he was more of the quiet reserve, um, reserve type. But I have to say that when, uh, when you have a personality or a friend like that, um, one of the be best feelings is when you make them laugh. Or when you, when they, when you can break their their facade of you know them being very appropriate and correct, and you know just I liked shocking him once in a while. I won't say how or why, but once in a while he just would look at me and burst out <laughs> laughing because of what I just said. Um, so those things, you know, we used to we've traveled together, we've had really uh, fun times together, and. Uh, I'll, I'll cherish those memories always. You know, uh, obviously, as you know, you're not the only one who loved him. In fact, it seems like everyone, even those who never met him, or uh, or maybe they, I mean, it does seem like he took a lot of selfies with a lot of people, as we've seen <laughs> all over the internet. But but he, but uh, I was joking in my essay that I did in tribute to him that he's pretty much the only Iranian on the planet that I can't find somebody who would have anything critical to say about. And that was that was in the way I guess he navigated his life because he wasn't devoid of opinions he in fact and i want to ask you about it i mean he uh, especially in the last couple of years turned up at a lot of demonstrations in support of um, freedom and democracy in iran um he was there with you in dc i mean he was he was outspoken in that way but he somehow managed to do this in a way that maintained retained his universal appeal his his status as somebody that we all love and, and relate to what how do you think he did that well i think it goes back to maybe some of the things we've already talked about which is that he he didn't have the type of temperament or personality in my opinion 
uh, to really impose his ideas on anyone. You know, he wasn't going to be going around, um, you know, telling you what to do, how to do it, what to think, or what he thought was best and how to do it. Um, so I think in that sense, uh, his political activism was uh, em emblematic of that. Like he didn't really um, try to uh, uh, make speeches uh, or give uh, direction. Um, he was always, uh, you know, we had week after week for, for months, we were together walking on Saturdays whenever both of us were in town uh, in, uh, in BC in the demonstrations. And uh, really, uh, he and I, I think almost everyone there, we were just trying to support those inside Iran. But with him, you know, he we didn't I didn't really ever until the uh, the murder of Massa, I never had a, any kind of political discussion or a po any kind of political relationship with um, with him. So it, we then, when everything happened and all the artists and every Iranian everywhere felt like they had to say something, do something, thankfully the community really came together. Sure, then things became, everybody became political. But even then, I don't know if he ever really expressed to me any political leanings other than his full support for the people inside Iran and for their fight for freedom and uh, for really his love, the love of his country, you know, and yeah. wanting it to become a democratic uh, country. And so in that sense, you're right, like maybe that if, if people really can't hate on you too much, if they don't, if you don't ever sort of uh, instigate your opinion into them or want to push them into believing something or the other, he really remained pure and yeah. Good for him. Maybe that's something we should all learn. <laughs> to uh, maybe do. maybe it goes back to the people believing him. I mean, if you if you have an opinion, but it seems like it's coming from a real genuine place. I mean, I I have to I haven't taken the temperature with the the leaders of the regime in Iran. They probably are not huge <laughs> fans of his, you know. But <laughs> but pretty much everyone else um, yeah. just loved him so much. Loved loves him. Oh, you know, I mean, it's hard to use yeah. the the past tense still. Um, yeah. But. Um, did you guys have conversations? He was he was he falls into that category of someone who spent, um, like you, like uh, the last four or more decades outside of Iran. But he was so connected and committed to Iran. It makes me very sad to say that in one of our conversations that we had actually on the air, he he said his greatest wish is looking forward to going back to Iran and you know, performing there and all that. And that's not something that's going to happen now. What what kind of conversations would he have with you about that? You know, like I said, I think we um, we really never got into anything remotely controversial or political in that sense. Um, it was just like we had a common mission, a human mess mission. We we were all operating from our hearts, and so we didn't really have either. You know, like these, we, we didn't have any philosophical conversations. We didn't really do that. I I asked him questions about other things, but I never I never really inquired about his, for example, his political memories of the past, or mm. you know what his uh, particular hopes are for the future. Um, it's strange because our friendship was truly um, outside of the political world, and I. I have to say, I have many friendships like that, and it's necessary for us because not everything for us, you know, sometimes we just want to have friendships that are not complicated by the heaviness mm. of our struggle for freedom in Iran, you know. And so I think when it came to Baramars and Majid, we mostly spent all of our time, most of our time was playing music. My husband loves to play the drums. So we would play uh, at a friend's house, a mutual friend's house, mm. who actually introduced us to Paramars and Majan. You know, we would, uh, they would play their, they would play drums and guitar, and he would sometimes break into song. And, you know, we always were sort of, prior to Massa's murder, all of our get-togethers were in that vibe. Mm. You know, we were mm. in 
artistic realm because also for my husband it it was an opportunity for him to release some of his stress in and with music and with art um you really can go travel to another realm mm. and so we really kept our friendship not not by force it just happened to right, be right. contact it was always it wasn't dictated music. that these are lines we're not going to cross or something yeah but yeah. but that it's part of my point though is that i guess that i mean he but he did show up. He was at those demonstrations, and it meant oh, so absolutely. much, right? Absolutely. And, and th that's yeah. the amazing thing. I mean, maybe that's the lesson. Any... You don't have to have an ideological, you know, uh, angle. No. You just need to be there, right? Uh, and he was. He was there. He. I. I can't say that he missed any demonstrations in D.C. Um, as I tried not to miss any. We were always there to, together, and it didn't matter who the speaker was what was you know the general vibe of the situation around us um we remained sort of focused and we were partners along with Marjan. i think we were partners in in this in this fight and i feel like um he really showed with his actions mm. uh where he stood when it came to uh fighting for freedom for Iran. Mm. He really, you know, for years he had shown it with his songs and his words and his poetry. But when the time came, he really stepped up and showed it, even when times when he wasn't feeling well, when his, I, I know that his um, uh, breathing was bothering him, it was cold. We were in a lot of very cold situations um, that while we did these marches. Uh, but Never, ever did he complain. He, that's the other thing. The man never complained. He could have been, that's when you asked me, how was he or what? I mean, honestly, just four weeks ago, he, not one moment where, oh, my God, I have a headache or something. Yeah. Never. He never complained about anything. And, and, um, and by um, the way, never complained about the fact that his career was derailed by the Islamic Revolution. Never said he wasn't bitter about that, said he just looked forward and wanted to be positive. He said he's, um, I mean, he told me once in an interview that he, uh, he's never been jealous and he doesn't even know what that, he can't relate to that. And I believed him. I mean, it, which is, smart. To most be people jealous. would, if they were saying that, I would say, I, yeah, this guy's making this up. But but he, he, he was almost a, uh, um, you know, you, you you say things when you lose someone like he was the best, but it's really hard to make the case that he wasn't the best, you know? I mean, he really lived all of these things that we aspire to. Yes, indeed. And and I I, I agree that, first of all, the, the, I, I think jealousy comes from a place of oftentimes just insecurity and not being confident in yourself. And he was absolutely someone who uh, had every confidence in himself and belief in his art and his mission. And so I don't think he engaged in comparing himself to anyone else, which is probably why he also didn't really sort of go along with some of these offers that were given to him to perhaps, you know, become more commercial or, uh, in terms of his performances and his music and, you know, do things maybe to make more money. Um, I think for him, he was solid in his uh, place in the world, and he was solid about what he was going to, um, what he was offering and what he was trying to uh, do, what his mission was. And, and so that means that, no, he, he can't, you can't, I can't compare him to anybody. Mm. And I don't think he compared himself to anybody. Very unique, very unique uh, person. Authentic and unique are the two adjectives I would use. I'm so um, grateful to get to have this conversation with you and and hear um, your perspectives and 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 your thoughts and and your emotions. Um, do you have a? I mean, before I let you go, do 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 you have a a memory you've been returning to um, with with Farah Myers? Is there something in your mind that you've been thinking about for the last couple of days since he's been gone? This is going to sound very silly, given that he's such a deep and uh, he, the, just intel intelligent uh, person. I What I keep thinking about for some reason is uh, we went to Mexico City uh, for a wedding together, and uh, uh, we went to 
Frida Kahlo Museum in Mexico City, and there was a. When was this? How long ago was this? Uh, ah, it was before COVID. I I think every everything in my life is before COVID, <laughs> after COVID. Okay. I don't remember how okay. long. Okay, pre COVID, yes. Before COVID, but the the thing that I keep thinking about and smiling is uh, when we there was a cutout of Frida and her husband, uh, who was quite a large. Large, who was a large fat man, if everybody, anyone knows. Um, uh, so the, the <laughs> my gentlemen stuck their faces in the holes. So I took a picture of them. <laughs> For some reason, I keep thinking back to that visual of them, especially because the husband was quite like, both uh, unfortunately, unattractive, large, and then <laughs> Farimar's handsomeness behind the, his face in that hole always made me, when I thought about it, I was just laughing these past uh, few days. I have if, to find that picture. I really have to go searching. People are going to be I, now. People are going to be looking for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, indeed. What a moving tearjerker a memory you you brought up. Uh, it's like <laughs> as I said, I have to. There's a mixture of laughing and crying that's been happening the last two days. I yeah. I uh, uh, thank you for sharing that story and thank you for making the time. I know it's been a, as you say, an up and down time for you, and uh, even in this in this chat, we've. The, the the emotions are are raw and uh i do really appreciate you making the time to do this oh yeah thanks for having me and thanks for allowing me to share my memories of them i hope i i did him justice because it's hard to explain a person like him in a few words in a 15 minute conversation so i think thank you, you thank you thank you so much